Hey guys, it's TJ, and today we're going to be talking about Blade Runner 2049. This is like if the live action Ghost in the Shell movie from earlier this year actually got good reviews. Sorry about the whole light thing, I thought that'd be pretty cool because, you know, film has a lot of neon and I thought maybe... Forget about it. Nope, it's stupid. So Blade Runner 2049 is the sequel to the cult classic 1982 film Blade Runner, which was originally directed by Ridley Scott. 2049 is directed by Denis Villeneuve, who you may know from films like Arrival, Prisoners, and Sicario. Uh, this guy's very talented, and you're gonna see when you see this film. This is one of the best sequels to a film that I've ever seen. It, it builds off the original, and it expands upon the world that is established in the original Blade Runner. Even without having seen the first film, you're still gonna have a pretty good time watching this film. The cinematography for this film is amazing. It's Roger Deakins. If you don't know Roger Deakins, he's done a lot of work with the Coen brothers, and he's probably one of the best cinematographers in Hollywood. This is very much a sequel to the original, which means that all of the tone and all of the mood and all of the uh, visual elegance of the first film is here, and in some cases in even greater form than it was in the original. I'm not gonna tell you anything about the plot. Like, I, you need to go into this thing uh, completely unaware of what the plot has entailed. Um, hopefully you haven't watched too many of the trailers, hopefully you haven't been reading uh, too many uh, spoiler-filled reviews, because it, it's really something that you're gonna want to experience in theaters. All I'm going to tell you is that this film revolves around K, played by Ryan Gosling, and he is a Blade Runner who is tasked with hunting down replicants or androids that look like humans. Uh, that's his job. That's all I'm gonna give you. Also, it's a sequel, so expect that uh, some plot points from the first film or elements of the first film story are going to be reflected in this film. This film is two hours and 45 minutes long, which is a long film. Like I could, you could tell in theaters that it was long. And I'm not gonna say that for some people that isn't a deal breaker, but for me, I was completely engaged in that whole two hours and 45 minutes. I mean, I know that it was a slower paced film. It's very much like the first film with the slower pace. Um, but it kind of earns it, and in a way, you're kind of just hoping that the film can kind of give you a little piece of what's coming next, um, and it keeps, you know, it keeps delivering, and I think that the two hours and 45 minutes for this film is worth it. Hans Zimmer and Benjamin Walfish provide the score, and it's like a continuation, uh, almost an evolution of the Vangelis score of the original film. Uh, there's a lot of heavy synth and electronic sounds, and it makes what's going on on screen that much more tense and that much more engaging. It's an amazing soundtrack. I haven't been captivated by a science fiction score like this since Gravity. I mean, I, I know that Gravity, it played a very large part in the film and how, you know, we experienced it. And I feel like that's the same for this film. Roger Deakins is gonna get an Oscar for this film. Um, I'm sure this thing is going to be nominated for a ton of Oscars and well-deserved. This is probably one of the best films I've seen all year. This film's not gonna be for everyone. If you didn't like the original Blade Runner, you're probably not gonna like this one. And the two hours and 45 minutes is gonna throw a lot of people off, but you know, everyone in the screening that I went to seemed to really enjoy it and wasn't disengaged from what was happening even with the long run time. This film has a fantastic mise-en-scene, and uh, I'm just kidding. Very rarely do I go into a film with high expectations and those expectations are actually met, um, but this is one of those, those rare cases. This film and Mad Max Fury Road are, I, somehow they can make a sequel to a film 30 years later and make it amazing? That's crazy. This is an extremely immersive film, a very well done science fiction film, and a very well done sequel, and hopefully you can go see it in theaters yourself. Blade Runner 2049, Wahoo! go see it. Well that's all for me today guys, hope you liked the video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.